Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw black curly fur in graphite. However, any dark curly fur you can use the tips and techniques that I share in this video there as well. Now the first thing that I like to do is use graphite powder to map in my main lights and darks and the shapes that I see. Now I'm not really focusing on the accurate values, I'm going to make this a lot darker and add in my highlights with my graphite pencils and my erasers later on. But at this stage I just want to get a general indication of where those main lights and darks are. Now what this graphite powder base layer does is it also creates a softness at that very early stage. Now I think this really helps to build up those softer fur textures when we come in with our pencils. So for me this is a really important stage that I like to make sure is given the right amount of time. Now my biggest tip for drawing curly fur is to just focus on the shapes. Try not to visualise this as drawing fur because our brain is just great at trying to then overcomplicate it. So if we really just focus on the curves and the shapes that we see here, it makes it so much easier to tackle. Now what I'm doing here is just another layer of the graphite powder so that I can hint at more of those darker shapes, getting those shadows in. But what's important is graphite powder is never going to be able to get it as dark as what the graphite pencils can. So this is just purely again about mapping it in. Now here I'm allowing some of that lighter paper to show through but there is graphite over every single part of this study. I'm not allowing the white of the paper here to show through. Now if I was drawing a lighter coated dog and that photo was overexposed you might have some areas of the fur that look bright white. So in those situations you might want to allow the white of the paper to show through. But in some cases you might actually want to add more details over areas that are overexposed if you don't want to leave them blank. But of course that's going to depend on your preference and the reference photo. Now at this stage this is where I can start to use my graphite pencils and refine the shapes and my contrast. Now you can see here that I'm really following the fur direction. I've got a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing fur in graphite. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But there I talk about three main things regarding pencil technique. That's fur length, fur thickness and fur direction. You can really see here the fur direction, it's building up the shape of the curls. Now curly fur, the movement of that, the way that the pencils need to be moved, it's going to have a little bit more of a looser style to it, but they're still going to follow the underlying bone and muscular structure. So I always talk about how fur direction isn't random, it does follow those structures under the skin. And as I say, although curly fur is going to have more freedom to move, the way that it overlaps in certain ways, you will still find that it travels in more of a distinctive pattern over those areas that are important to that skeleton or the muscles underneath the skin. So for example, this area here, you might have the shoulder blades on either side. So the way that it curves over left and right, it's really important to make sure that's replicated properly. But again, look at how I'm just focusing on one thing at a time. So I'm moving from left to right, top to bottom, but I'm really focusing just on the darker shapes at the moment. Now this can be quite an overwhelming way to break it up because it can make it feel like the area is just too dark and sometimes we might get that fear of well what if I can't lighten it back up to add my highlights. However, if you're layering in the right way the erasers are going to be able to lift majority of that graphite off that paper if needed. So it's always best to make sure that you go dark enough at these stages. Because if we don't go too dark, the overall depth is going to be lacking significantly and therefore that portrait, the fur that we're drawing, is not going to be as realistic. So it's so important to make sure that we've got that contrast right. Now the contrast is the importance of the value, so your lights and your darks. And quite often with graphite, we have the potential to not go dark enough because we have that fear of not being able to lighten it. But if you do use the graphite in the right way, we can lighten it significantly if we need to. Now this is something that I cover thoroughly in my step-by-step -step tutorials on Patreon. That first base layer stage, it has to have the right contrast and depth in order to make the highlights look right. One of the questions that I'm asked is that some of the erasers don't lift that graphite off the paper properly. And it's not the issue with the eraser, it's usually that the graphite hasn't been applied in the right way. Now this is something that I'll cover more when we work with those erasers. But look at the moment here, it starts to take on a bit more of a messier appearance, but it's only because we're still at those initial layers. We really have to build it up and work past this stage in order to get anywhere with the additional depth that we're trying to build here. 
Now that brings me on to the layering process. It's really important to make sure that the right number of layers is used. You can see here that I'm doing another layer to darken up some of those existing shadows. This is helping to yet again add more depth to that section. And when I work on the other side, it's going to be a rinse and repeat process. There is still lots to add here, but I wanted to get this up to the entire standard of the right hand side before I could start working in with some highlights. But in order to build up the depth, the layering process, it can't be just a matter of one or two layers. It's very much one of those things where the more layers you add, the more depth and realism you're going to create. It's always worthwhile knowing as well that you shouldn't overwork an area. So if you're starting to feel that you're happy with that section, like I am here on the right hand side, I'm now coming across and working on the left. Now what this enables me to do is prevent myself from actually going backwards in steps. And if you start to overwork an area because we're just focusing on it for far too long, they can actually end up covering up valuable layers of depth, i.e. the midtones, and making everything either too light or too dark. Now, because I haven't used my erasers yet, I haven't added any highlights, but it would be very easy to get carried away with my darker pencils and then cover up some of those midtones that I'm allowing to show through. So if you have that happen, that's where you want to stop and then work on an area next to it. We can always come back to it later on and continue to make those midtones darker if we feel we need to. Now, one thing I speak about in the real time tutorial is how sometimes you could potentially want to draw around individual curls. Now, as you can see here, I'm not actually doing that. I haven't focused on any of the highlights yet. I'm sort of allowing those midtones to hint at where those placements of the highlights are eventually going to be. But I don't like to personally draw around those highlights because I feel that that therefore creates a bit more of a cartoon style around those edges of the curls. And that's obviously something that I'm trying to avoid. I do want to have that softness with the curls but still have definition with them as well. So I like to build up my layers like this and then come back in with my erasers to pull in those highlights. So now I've got more of this area of the fur drawn in, you can really see how the fur direction, fur thickness and fur length are all coming together. So the length of my pencil strokes is of course determined by how long that pencil is in contact with the paper for and that is very much going to vary depending on how curly that fur texture is. If you've got more of a wavier fur texture, you're going to have to lengthen those pencil strokes quite considerably. Whereas the thickness of those pencil strokes is determined by a couple of factors. You've got how sharp that lead is on the pencil, you've got how much pressure to apply to the pencil, and even how you move and hold that pencil could adjust how thick those lines are. So it's something to pay close attention to regarding the pencil technique. All of those factors come together to create that one desired eraser stroke or pencil stroke that we're trying to create. Now for using the eraser, this here is the Tombow Mono Eraser and it works perfectly for the highlights. Now what I'm trying to do here as you can see is reinforce that fur direction but I'm not looking to add in too many highlights. I'm also keeping those highlights to the centre of those mid-tone areas. So this is helping to make sure that we've captured that depth where we've got a shadow that rolls up over towards a highlight and you don't have a harsh start and stop point between those two. You want to make it look like the curl rolls seamlessly from the dark up to the light so you will have a mid-tone in the middle. And this is why those mid-tones were allowed to show through at all of that layering processes before we got to the highlighted stage. Now once I'd added my first lot of highlights, I'm now going to come in with a darker graphite pencil and really hype up those contrasts with the shadows. Now this brings me on to another top tip and if you're looking to make a highlight appear brighter but let's say you've got the white of the paper showing, you physically can't make that look any brighter, then darken up what's next to it. So here, although I can pull in more highlights and remove more of the graphite, the fact that I'm darkening up some of my shadows is going to make some of those highlights appear lighter. But if you are drawing darker curly fur, you won't necessarily want the white of the paper showing. So here, although I've added in my highlights, they're not bright white. They're more of like a lighter grey. So the values and how far in terms of how dark or how light that should be is of course going to vary from that reference photo and light source. But now I've come back in and I'm going to hype up that highlight even more and overall improve that contrast yet again. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week, so if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. 
If you are interested in following along to the real time version of this, then the step by step lesson is available on my Patreon now. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. I'm going to be uploading another video at the end of the week, but as always, thank you so much for watching.